We've looked at pretty much every weapon and every single map across all of Halo, but what about the vehicles? Throughout the years, Halo games have had multiple vehicles play massive roles in the game's sandbox, and they've also changed dramatically over time. So let's look at every single human vehicle across the entire Halo franchise, and make sure you're subscribed to check out our upcoming video on the Covenant vehicles. that will be out relatively soon. But before we hop into the rest of this video, this video is sponsored by the hit mobile RPG, Raid Shadow Legends. Yes, THE Raid Shadow Legends. Well, if you don't know about Raid Shadow Legends, it's a free-to-play mobile game with millions of players that offer amazing graphics quality right there on your phone. And it has over 650 completely unique characters to collect and build your squad with. New updates roll out every month with new champions and tons of content. And just like any good RPG, Raid also has dungeons with some big bosses, like look at this big bad dragon right here. It can poison you, it got the fire breath, and also it will put some debuffs on you. If you and your champions aren't prepared, Prepared, you're gonna get eaten. Bringing champions that can increase your attack is a good idea, or someone who can just poison the dragon right back. Give it some of its own medicine, if you will. Besides having some cool bosses, there's also a Valentine's Day event going on in the game right now for new players. After downloading the game with our link down below, copy your in-game player ID and then head over to raidlovequest.polarium.com. Once you enter your ID there, you'll receive the Raid Love Quest, which from February 14th to March 14th lets you play one of the Valentine's themed mini games for a chance to win win some fantastic in-game and real-life prizes like Valentine's Day themed champions or even Amazon gift cards up to $1,000. Hey, it's completely free to download, so why not give it a try? Don't worry though, if you've already played Raid Shadow Legends before and are a veteran player, you can still feel the love to use special promo code SAINTVALENTINE23 that everyone can use to get a small Valentine's gift. And what are you waiting for at this point? Go ahead and click on the link in the description or scan the QR code here on the screen. You'll get unique bonuses worth $30, including the free champion Chinoru and some other useful stuff. Let's go back to the very beginning with Halo Combat Evolved, but before Halo Combat Evolved released, back during the early prototype phasing and beta phasing of Halo when originally it was intended to be an RTS game. Now we've seen a lot of revealed footage over the years showing some things that were originally intended to be in the game, like there's this cut Hummer vehicle that we never got to see, and also a more human looking tank or more realistic modern day tank. Later on, the game would be moved to being potentially a third person shooter instead, and there were still some more vehicles that were kind of toyed around with. There were supposed to be these boats that would carry troopers, and there was also these snowmobile looking vehicles that could drive on water that were called doozies. There was this normal looking modern day helicopter, but I think it was cut because it wasn't futuristic enough. And then over the course of multiple Halo games, we've heard from interviews and just posts from Marcus Leto saying that he always had a plan for some sort of really cool UNSC flying vehicle and essentially in Combat Evolved there was the Crestal which could have been the flying human vehicle from Combat Evolved but this ended up getting cut and then it would get cut again from Halo 2 and it was supposed to be this VTOL like vehicle. This concept would later eventually be brought back in Halo Spartan Strike in 2015 as the AV-30 Kestrel. Also during this time Marcus Leto conceptual a idea for a mech walker and while there wasn't a 3d model just concept art it would be brought back later on in the form of the mantis when 343 took over with halo 4. it was also a different tank variant known as a stealth tank which was a lot more like a flat version of the scorpion with the cannon not really sticking up as high and it's rumored that this vehicle may make a return with the dig site alpha initiative the 343 launch where modders that are funded by 343 are restoring a bunch of cut content for players to get to experience and then there's the vehicles that actually made it into Halo Combat Evolved that had early builds of the vehicles as well. And while we talk about the Combat Evolved versions, we might show a little bit of what we do know on earlier versions of these vehicles if we have them. For instance, we can look at the Warthog, which is probably one of the most iconic Halo vehicles of all time. Sure, in Combat Evolved, it had a more primitive design to it to match its primitive physics that it had, but nonetheless, it kind of set a standard as a very recognized vehicle that would go down in history. There was also the Rocket Hog that existed in the big team battle modes in Combat Evolved. It was just like a little grenade launcher, rocket launcher thing on the back of a Warthog, which was pretty cool. We see the first version of the Scorpion tank that made it into the final version of the game as well. And this thing does look a little more primitive in design as it doesn't have the detailed textures that it would get later on in 
in later iterations. But hey, it got the job done, it set the expectation for what a Scorpion tank would be, and it was pretty cool here. And then of course, there was the Pelican in Halo Combat Evolved that we couldn't ever fly, though we did ride in it multiple times and we all wanted to fly it. And uh, yeah, that that's about it just something that we wish we could fly. During the development of Halo 2, there were a lot of vehicles that never actually made their way into the sandbox of the game or the full release, even if the development on them went further than expected. For instance, there's an early blockout version of the Falcon, which would later appear in the form of the vehicle we fly in Halo Reach. Some modders actually were able to restore it and fly this vehicle, which is pretty impressive. We also know that the Mongoose was supposed to originally appear in Halo 2, and it was actually cut pretty late in development, but obviously it wouldn't be cut forever. And while this version of the Mongoose does look incredibly fun to drive around in, we would get an updated version later on when Halo 3 rolled around. There are a couple of other interesting vehicles, like an anti-air scorpion, which we don't know too much about, and something known as a strike fighter, which would have appeared in a cutscene and not actually have been flyable. There was the plan to bring another troop boat into the form of Halo, which would have carried troops known as the Orca, and then deep in the game files, some people have discovered a vehicle known as a piglet, which is an interesting name, but it's essentially a little miniature warthog. And it's kind of like giving off some Mario Kart vibes. Maybe it would have been for a mini game or something where it was like an inside joke at Bungie. We also got to see some different warthog variants that never made their way into Halo 2, like the Arctic Hog or the Tropic Hog or the Recovery Hog. But when Halo 2 officially released, pretty much we just got the same selection of vehicles from Halo Combat Evolved that made it into the final version of the game, though the graphics in Halo two were incredibly impressive and the way that a lot of the vehicles looked were more realistic and more crisp. The only vehicle that didn't return was the Rocket Hog, which would be replaced with the Gauss Hog, and yes, that is how you pronounce it. If you thought otherwise, you're wrong. Halo 3 only had a few cut vehicles. We had the Falcon once again, which never fully made its way in, but we did get the Hornet instead, which we'll talk about momentarily. And there was also files for a Medical Troop Warthog, which had stretchers in the back. This was found in the Halo 3 beta, but never made its way into the final game. Halo 3 would bring back many of the vehicles from Halo 2, like the Warthog, the Scorpion, the Gauss Hog. Now the Mongoose was finally included in its newest design and it was a lot of fun to drive around in. Interestingly enough, if an enemy player tried to hijack you, instead they would just jump on the back seat and then probably beat you down from there. We also saw the Elephant be introduced for the level Sand Trap, which were incredibly fun to drive. I don't know why these things were so much fun to drive. They were so slow and hard to control, but like they were so much fun to drive back in the day. And then of course the Hornet, which had missiles on it. It had little guns on it. If you were a secondary or third person riding on it, you were practically useless, but it was still a really cool vehicle. It was fast and it was just a really cool new thing for Halo 3. And then the Warthog transport was introduced in Halo 3 as well. And it was like a Warthog, except you could load up some Marines on the back, which were cool. Unfortunately, we couldn't ride in the back seat area, but still, conceptually speaking, it was neat. Halo 3 ODST didn't introduce any brand new vehicles unless we want to count Dare's dump truck, which we never actually got to drive. Though there were plans to try to make the vehicle drivable when they brought Firefight into MCC. It looks like that wasn't something that they were able to do. However, ODST did see a Master Chief Collection update that would update the Warthog transport to allow ODSTs to sit in the back of it, making the back area of the Warthog transport available for the first time ever. This isn't something you can do in regular Halo 3 because the Spartan models are too big, so it's something you can only do when you're playing through ODST's campaign, so try and enjoy it while you can. When it comes to Halo Reach, there were a few cut vehicles that we don't know too much about. It was more just conceptual ideas for like this armored personal carrier, a drone that looks kind of ripped out of ODST completely, or even a motorboat, which seems like someone at Bungie really wanted some water stuff happening in Halo, but it never got to that point. The main core UNSC vehicles from the Halo games returned for Halo Reach, and they looked a little bit newer, a little more upgraded to match the art style that Halo Reach had. The Hornet was removed from Halo Reach and this time around replaced with the Falcon, which was cool and there was different variants on it for the campaign side of things, which were an added bonus. They later would be added into MCC's Forge mode. And now that the Mongoose had returned again, this time around they actually added in a hijacking mechanic where if a player jumps on, it actually kicks the driver off rather 
than just having them ride on the back of the enemy player's mongoose for a bit. It did make some silly moments in custom games a little bit weird. There was a glitch to bypass it, but it did make more sense in the multiplayer setting to have the hijacking system take precedence. The Rocket Hog was brought back in a new way, redesigned and had more of like this missile launcher approach that would shoot multiple rockets at once. And for the first time ever, we got to fly a space vehicle in the form of the Saber for one campaign mission, though it later would be available in Forge mode as well. Halo Reach also introduced a lot of other little vehicles that we could never drive before, like a forklift or a cart or a van or a truck. And these are really awesome in the campaign. And it was really exciting when the updated Forge mode rolled out in MCC that allowed us to drive these vehicles in a larger sense beyond just playing them in the campaign. There was also this truck from Winter Contingency that everybody knows about, which was later brought back in the Forge as well. Also, it's worth noting in Halo Reach, there was a secret Easter egg that allowed you to fly the Pelican for the first time ever, which was a really big deal. But moving on to Halo 4, we had another selection of vehicles modified and rearranged. The classic vehicles mostly all made a return in Halo 4, looking like this with their new design. I mean, look at all of the gas cans they added in Halo 4. I mean, there's a lot of gas cans here. <laughs> the Mantis was a new vehicle introduced, which was a fun walking mech thing. It's interesting because this vehicle started out as a bipod of a Spartan. And if you look at like early builds of the game that players have access to and spawned it in, it just looks like legs and ass walking around. I don't know how else to explain it. It later was refined and became the Mantis that we know now. There was also a Mammoth, which was like an elephant on steroids, though we couldn't actually drive it. We could only ride on it. And then in the campaign, we got to fly a Pelican without doing an Easter egg for the first time ever, which was a part of an actual mission. It was kind of short lived when you play the actual level, but it still was a neat addition. It became a lot cooler when they added it into forge mode. So now you can just free fly it however you want to fly it. And on the final level, we do get to fly a broadsword, which is kind of cool too. Also in Halo 4, they cut out the Falcon for whatever reason, so it just was not there. In multiplayer, there was no flying UNSC vehicle at first. Halo 2 Anniversary saw the removal of some of the vehicles that were in Halo Reach or in Halo 4. However, some new vehicles were introduced, like the Gun Goose being introduced for the first time ever, and this thing was a lot of fun. I don't know if it was really the most effective thing. It kind of was the worst, but the concept of it was A plus for sure. And I think people really liked it. They also added in the Hornet from Halo 3, but this time in Halo 2 Anniversary, which was interesting because this vehicle wasn't in Halo 2 at all, but hey, now it's here. So that's cool. Halo 2 Anniversary also introduced the Golden Warthog, which was this mythical beast of a vehicle that fans had speculated upon for years and years. There were posters regarding it. No one could ever experience the vehicle itself and then finally in Halo 2A they kind of slid it in there so players could finally drive it and it became a popular vehicle in a lot of custom games for what Halo 2A short-lived custom games ended up actually being which were actually pretty fun. Looking into Halo 5 Guardians there's a lot and it gets a little confusing when we do these evolution type videos because there's a ton of rec card variants. It's almost too many to include them all but we're gonna try to cover the most important things here. The Mongoose has a base version plus a bunch of different variants like an Oni version and a Snow version. And this also is the same for the Gun Goose, which was modified from the original Halo 2 Anniversary version of the Gun Goose to be a little bit better. The Warthog has a bunch of new variations as well, most notably a Rally Warthog, which is what we believe is the fastest ground vehicle in all of Halo maybe. There's some other cool variants like the Sword Needle Warthog that shoots needles. There's a Scout Warthog that has a different version as well that goes with the same as the Rocket Hog. And some of them are just actually really really fun to try out and use, like the Vespin Rocket Hog, which has faster shooting and a reloading mechanic. The Gauss Hog is back again and has a similar variant like the Oni version. The Scorpion Tank is here as well, and there is the Hannibal Scorpion Tank that shoots lasers, so it's like a Gauss tank or something. There's multiple different versions of the Mantis here. And while the Halo 5 campaign didn't have a UNSC flying vehicle, eventually Halo 5 got an update that added in a new vehicle known as the Wasp, which can like fly around fast. It's a lot like a Hornet, but it's a little bit more mobile. And then there's variations of that as well with like the Oni Wasp and the Hannibal Wasp. Okay. And then just for the sake of including everything here, we are going to briefly go over Halo Wars 1 and 2, even though we aren't the most educated Halo Wars fans. There were some cool UNSC vehicles that 
got introduced in those games though, like the Grizzly, the Kodiak, the Wolverine, and the Cobra. And there was also some different flying vehicles like the Vulture, the Nightingale, the Condor, or the Hawk here. There was in Halo Wars 2 a new vehicle called the Jackrabbit, which was essentially a faster scouting ground vehicle, which was pretty cool. And there was this different type of mech, which was called a Cyclops. Now, while we think Halo Infinite will one day see some new vehicles added into the sandbox, as far as the base release of the game, the sandbox for UNSC vehicles does seem a little bit more limited than other Halo games, especially coming out of Halo 5 Guardians. But these are the vehicles that did make their way into Halo Infinite. The Warthog, the Mongoose, the Gun Goose, the Scorpion Tank, the Rocket Hog, and the Wasp. Things like the Gauss Hog are gone. No more Mantis. We did get one brand new vehicle though in the form of the Razorback, which is kind of like an armored up version of the Troop Warthog from previous games, but it fits some Marines and the Marines in Halo Infinite, to be fair, they can do some damage on some enemies, which is pretty cool. But outside of just the armored up Troop Warthog with a cool name like Razorback, that's it. We hope we do get to see some more vehicles come in the future, but as far as whatever we know for Halo Infinite in the future, it's still kind of a big mystery. Now it is interesting if you look into the Halo Infinite cut files, it does seem like there's a lot of leftovers from Halo 5, like the Hannibal Scorpion or the Oni Rocket Turret. And it seemed like they also had tried out a few different things, like possibly doing a snow version of the Mongoose, which makes us think that there probably was a snow part of the campaign that ended up getting cut altogether. But we see this snow Mongoose that still has the treads on it, which is kind of neat. I really wish we would have gotten some more locales in the Halo Infinite campaign, especially if you look at that original teaser that just like shows all these different biomes. And then we just get the grass one. There's this interesting supply line vehicle, which is like a mongoose with a box on the back that has some weapons in it. We also have seen a cut Gauss Warthog, which honestly, once again, this vehicle seems like the biggest surprise when it comes to vehicles that didn't make its way into the release of the game. And then interestingly enough, you can also find a block out version of a vehicle known as the Cougar, which is reminiscent to the cut Halo Reach APC vehicle. It looks like it could have been possibly a UNSC larger form vehicle that would have been really neat to have. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we'll be getting it anytime soon, at least not yet. Personally, we still think it would be best served if all vehicles that have ever been in Halo would just be a part of the ultimate Halo experience in Halo Infinite and everything would just be there. I don't really like the idea of sunsetting some things and trying to reintroduce them later or different versions of them later. Just give us everything. Let us have the entirety of the Halo experience all in one place. Super Smash Bros did that with Smash Ultimate, finally bringing in every single character ever into one single game and then went above and beyond from there. And I think Halo Infinite should should have been that game to just bring every experience from Halo into one place. Now we know that Halo Infinite isn't in the most polished and perfected state yet and has a long way to go and I don't know if the player base can even recover but who knows what the future holds. Then in Halo 7 they decided to cut the Warthog out altogether. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button down below. Let us know which vehicle of all time is your favorite and which one do you miss the most that didn't make it into Halo Infinite. Also, if you want to see our Covenant video, we're gonna be working on that soon. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for new videos like this. Huge shout out to our patrons, link in the description down below if you wanna join up with the group of patrons who have made this type of video possible. Otherwise, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.